Hey, Shalom, man. Praise Yahweh. If everybody will go ahead and stand, we will we'll open up in prayer. Great and merciful loving Father, whose holy and righteous name is Yahweh. Father, this is your servant, Kawan Priya Hawkins, Father, along with the men of your house, asking permission to come before you under the headship of our pastor and overseer, the great Kohan Yosef Hawkins, and through the authority of your son, Yahshua Messiah. And Father Yahweh, we do come before you this evening. We do praise you and thank you, Father Yahweh, for allowing us to, to come before you, Father Yahweh, to to sit and to to, uh, to learn, Father Yahweh, and to rehearse the the words of the greatest teacher in the world, Father Yahweh, our pastor and overseer, the great Kohan Yosef Hawkins. We do... And we do pray, Father Yahweh, that you'll help us in our efforts and in overcoming all sin, Father Yahweh, that you'd bless us, Father Yahweh, and help us to retain this knowledge, Father Yahweh, that uh, that you've allowed us to to uh, to hear, Father, and pray that you'll help us in our in our efforts and in putting these things to use in our daily lives, Father Yahweh, to take it to heart and to truly believe all that the prophets have spoken. And Father Yahweh, we do love you, we do praise you, and we thank you for everything you've given to us. And we do ask these things in the name of your Son, Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Everybody, please go ahead and be seated. And we are going to continue in the 11th book of Yisrael, part 2. And we'll be in uh, in chapter 11. We'll start be starting in, well, we'll be covering chapter 11 this evening. And uh, it's entitled, Religion by Force, Religion by Choice, Foundation by Dictators, the Foundation of the Popes, number 3. The Feast of Trumpets near the end of the last generation. And this is actually, you know, fairly, you know, I say fairly recent. It's from uh, September 29th of 2011, the Feast of Trumpets. And, you know, Pastor, he starts out here and he, and, and, and he starts out with, really, with kind of a warning here. A warning for us. And he says, now we've got a bunch of listeria floating around. And listeria is a really, really deadly bacteria. Okay, so he's warning us. He's warning us that there is this bacteria called Listeria, and there's an outbreak. And, you know, he says it's not necessarily in this particular area, he said, but it is in Texas, and it was affecting, it's affecting the fruit. It was affecting the cantaloupe. And that's just what they know about. And remember this, you've got to remember that whenever they, you know, they talk about these diseases and these bacteria, and... You know, things along this line is they're only reporting. Sometimes they're only reporting what they know, or what they or, or what they or what they have found. They don't know just because, like here, it says the case says the cantaloupes are were infected, but that doesn't mean like the strawberries aren't infected, or the watermelons aren't infected, or there's other fruits and vegetables that aren't infected. This is the only thing they've been able to isolate it to, or, bit, or the only thing they're reporting on, or the cantaloupe. So just kind of keep that in mind, you know, that this isn't necessarily just the only thing that these, uh, th that these, um, these bacteria or these, uh, you know, bacteria, parasites, whatever you want to call them, are attacking. It says, in verse 3, it says, it says, listeria deaths and illnesses expected to rise, the deadliest food outbreak in the United States in more than a decade. So, so in more than 10 years, you know, this is, you know, this was back in, again, back in 2011. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, it used to be that these, that these diseases or the, these bacteria stuff would be, you know, they could be washed off and you could just kind of wash them off and be done with it. But, you know, you know even more and more, I think with, with E. coli and in, in, in some instances and some other types of bacteria, they actually reside inside the plant. They actually become a part of the plant. You know, and it just goes to, and no amount of washing is going to get that, is going to resolve that. And what that goes to show, man, it just goes to show just the extent, you know, just how, you know, just to what extent that the earth's food supply has become defiled. And remember, this is going to be one of the jobs of this kingdom of priests. The kingdom of the priests that Yahweh is establishing at this time, one of the jobs and one of the most important jobs is going to be guarding the food supply. You know, we're going to have, you know, that is going to be, that is going to be a, a, a very large part of it. And as we, as we, you know, as we go through today, you know, this evening, as we go through here, we're going to see, we're, you know, we're, we're going to see why. You know, he said, the pastor shows here, he says, if you handled it in the grocery store and you bought other food and you brought it home, you put that in the refrigerator. He says it can actually live in the refrigerator. Remember the word abominable that's written there in, in Leviticus? Remember abominable means it can actually transfer. Yeah, it can transfer from one thing to another, or from one person to another. 
And this is what this bacteria does. It, it, and he shows here it can, it can survive in the refrigerator and it can transfer from, from one thing to the next to the next. So, you know, he's cautioning us. He's saying, you know, be very careful. You know, be very careful. And, he, and he's always warned us to be extremely careful when we go out into the world and we deal with these things. You know, he tells us that we need to make sure that we take the precautions, make sure that we're doing everything we can to protect ourselves. Not only externally, you know, with, with, with certain oils or, or with things like that, but also he says here, he, and he shows here, it says, and this stuff mostly hurts people with weakened immune systems. So we need to make sure that we're, we're you know, we're following the instructions and doing the things that we need to do to build our immune systems. And one thing, Pastor, one thing he mentioned here about helping to build the immune system is superfood. And, you know, superfood, is, is, it's, a, it's a great immune builder. And then he, he brings up about E. coli. Uh, he said they also have an E. coli scare in the ground beef. So not only are we seeing it in the, in the fruits and in the vegetables, but we're also seeing it in the meat. And we've seen, uh, you know, we've seen films and, uh, and video of the different parasites that actually live inside some of the ground meat that, or inside, um, inside some of the meat. So, you know, again, we're seeing the extent, the, just how, just the, the extent of how defiled the earth has become. And then in verse 6 here, he shows here, he, he shows us here, he says, he says, now this right here, pay attention to it because the viruses, like STDs, the things I've told you that everyone has now, everyone in the world. And he's saying, and he's pointing out the simple fact that everyone has some form of an STD. He says, unless Yahweh has cleansed us from that, unless we have followed the instructions and followed, followed the instructions to get rid of these things, he says, it's just there. And these things are passed down. Remember, these, 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 uh, these STDs are passed down from one generation to the next, to the next, to the next. You know, I've talked to somebody who you know, they, I've, I've, ta I've talked to a, to a co-worker and this individual has a friend who is, I think, this individual is something like 37 years old and is just eaten, just totally eaten up with cancer at 37 years old. And basically she's in the hospital waiting to die and she has, she has turned you know, of course, just like the world does, the world turns to the pharmaceutical company. You know, they turn to the they turn to the uh, to the sorceries, as it's as it's outlined in 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 the book of Revelation. You know, the the, the sorceries ties in with the pharmaceutical companies. You know, it ties in with with those things. They're trying to find a cure. What they're what they're trying to do, they're trying to find a way to eliminate the curse that comes from the breaking of the law of Yahweh so the individuals can continue to break the law of Yahweh. That's the whole idea behind it. But we know that that isn't going to take place. There is absolutely nothing that anybody is going to be able to come up with to do away with these STDs, to, to do away with the, the diseases that are, that are out there. The antibiotics, you know, we've read about the antibiotics. Pastors ta ta you know, taught us you know that many of these things are many of these uh, bacteria and things are now antibiotic resistant, where they no longer the uh, the strongest antibiotics they have no longer work. So if the strongest thing they have doesn't work, then what's left? Nothing. These things are going to continue to they're going to continue to 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 grow and continue to proliferate. You know to to, to pro proliferate. But he says that they're just there. He says these things these STDs these diseases they're there he says babies are being born with it you know and and you can see that and he's mentioned about the state schools you know he's shown that you know you know babies are being born with with weakened minds and, and you can see that in in the behavioral you know in 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 the way that some of the children behave at very very young ages um you know there's just many different ways that you can see it and rather than the parents taking the time to properly teach their children and to take the time and do their job, fulfill the job as a parent. As a parent, our job is to properly raise our children. That's what we're there for. We are there to do that. We are there to, 
to, to teach our children righteousness, to train the child, to train the children up in the way that they should go. To train them up in the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. To teach them, you know, what's acceptable, acceptable behavior, what's not acceptable behavior. To, you know, to teach them how to make a proper decision. You know, the Peaceful Solution, I mean, it, sh it shows us how to make a, a, how to make a proper decision. How to stop, think, consider our options, and proceed with the right choice. And I've actually had parents tell me, well, well you know, when, I, when I've explained and, and showed them the program, they say, well, I don't want to take the time to teach my child. Well, <laughs> you, know, you know, they want something, you know, they have an instant gratitude. They, they want something to work instantaneously, to work right away. But they don't want to put forth any effort to see the results. So if there, you know, if we don't, if the if the effort isn't going to be made, then the results aren't going to be seen. It's just not going to it's not going to take place. So to counteract that, what they've done is they put the they they put the child on a drug. They put them on some type of drug, and the drugs, of course, the you know the drugs that are out there, there isn't a drug out there that doesn't have a side effect. They're going to have a side effect of one form or another. You know, it's pretty bad when you when you when you see a commercial on, like when you see a commercial for an anti you know an antidepressant, and one of the side effects is increasing thoughts of depression and thoughts of suicide. This thing is supposed to help resolve that, but instead it compounds it. And they say, well, if you have the if you have these thoughts, you know, then you might want to get with somebody because you know you might want to get with your doctor. But it's, you know, these things, and Pastor has said, you know, the, you know these things, they, they really, I mean, they harm. You know, they, they really bring a, about a lot of harm. And it all comes from trying to avoid, it all comes from the desire to practice iniquity. It comes from the desire not to follow the laws of Yahweh. You know, Pastor, he brought up about uh, you know, at, at, the, at this time, there were two individuals uh, that were 51 years old, and one of them had brain cancer, and the other one, I believe, had lung cancer, and they were both 51 years old. You know, and Pastor was showing that, you know, you know that these, you know, that these things, you know, these diseases, these cancers, are as a result. I mean, they're not naturally occurring. I mean, there's no such thing as a natural disease like that. We've got to remember what the scripture says. The scripture says a curse causeless will not come. So why would a person get such a horrible disease like cancer if there wasn't some type of of sin that was that that that, would, that brought that about? There had to be there had to be something there. And Pastor is bringing that to light. You know, he's showing. That the laws, you know, that the laws that are written in there in Leviticus 18 are being violated. Not only that, not only those laws, you know, concerning the the, the sexual type of, of sins, which result in the STDs, but it also has to do with the consumption of unclean foods. You know, when you combine these things, I mean, these things, I mean, it, it's, you know, it compounds the problem. It's not going it, to, it's 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 going to make the problems worse. And this is this is what we're seeing. You know, their pastor says that they're finding viruses, which he says everyone has one, and they can get it in any place in their body, including the brain, and that may not they may not list that cause uh, of dying as an STD, but they died from a disease that was as a result of an STD. You know, they may not say somebody died from syphilis or gonorrhea or chlamydia, but they might say, well, you know, he had a massive heart attack. Well, what is it? You know, what is one of the diseases that causes the scarring of the uh, of the uh, of the major blood vessels in the uh, you know in the body? Isn't it chlamydia? Isn't that one that causes the little lesions? You know, there, well, there's probably many of them that do that, but the 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 the, the, the root cause of that is the STD. You know, and Pastor, you know, and he shows that. Uh, you know, he shows again, you know, he says to remember to build up your immune system now. You know, and he's been telling us that for how many years? To build the immune system, to build the immune system. Okay? Many, many, many years he's been telling us to do that. 
And it's not something that's going to take place overnight. It takes time. It takes persistence. The patient persistence in doing righteousness and, and following the directions of the one sent and, and, and being submissive to that, that's how we are going to survive these troublous times that are coming. But he says, that no, he says, don't forget to build the immune system. You know, that's part of guarding the house of Yahweh. That's part of guarding our minds. You know, if we don't build up the immune system, it's going to, I mean, we, you know, we're, it's, it's, you know, we're, we're not going to get any better. You know, we're going to, we're going to remain at whatever level that we are, you know, even though we're not putting any additional, you know, any additional unclean things into our bodies intentionally anyway. You know, we're still, you know, we, you know, we still have to help build up that immune system because you got to remember and, and remember how these diseases work. Remember these diseases, they will sit and they will hide in the body. You know, and they're not going to, you know, it's like a lion. You think a lion's going to go after the most, the, the, uh, uh, the strongest, uh, the strongest animal in the herd? Are they going to go after the leader of the herd? No, nah, they're going to look for the easiest meal that they can get, Right. So they're going to go after the weakest in the herd. They're going to sit back and they're going to watch. And they're going to look around and they're going to see, okay, where can I attack? Where is this herd the weakest? Well, think about the same thing with these diseases. What do these diseases do? They're not going to attack. They're not going to attack the healthy body when, it's, when, it, when the defenses are at the highest. Okay? But where they're going to cause the damage, when they're going to get in there and really start to show themselves is when the body starts to become weaker. Then it can easily overcome. It can easily overcome the defense system, the body's immune system that's there. It can more easily overcome that. You know, and part of this is all brought about, you know, part of this, you know, part of this, you know, the, the, uh, um, you know, concerning the, you know, the sexual sins and the STDs and all that. Pastor, remember, we've heard him talk about the swinging 60s. You know, we talked about the swinging 60s. And, and now remember the, the, um, the, uh, um, the technology exhibit that was out here during the feast. And remember, that was to show how technology has increased in pastor's lifetime. Okay, and remember how we, how we saw all of that, you know, how all of that increased, right? In, rel in a relatively short time period that that, that, that that technology increased to the point from the time that Pastor was born to the point where we now have the ability to destroy all life off the face of the earth through nuclear and atomic weapons. Well, Pastor shows here, he says, I saw television come out in the 40s. And he says he was alive back, he said he was alive back then, and I remember when they were invented and how they started invading the homes. And now we see, you know, how Hollywood and, and, and the things that Hollywood is pushing, you know, we can see how, you know, the, the, you know, the television shows and, and the type of things that are being pushed. And it's all geared toward these sexual sins. You know, Pastor has said it before. He says, you know, there, you know there's, you know, you can't find a television show where somebody's not getting into trouble getting ready to get into trouble or just getting out of trouble. That's the whole storyline behind all of these things. And in every one of these things, in, in, in almost all of these things, you see some type of illicit sex. Adultery, fornication, bestiality even, homosexuality. And we're not just talking things that are geared toward adults. On so-called family safe programming, you know, I mean, you're seeing more and more where they're pushing homosexuality. And it's geared toward our young children. What is that teaching them? If, if you know, man, you know, if, if we allow our children to watch these things, what is that teaching them? Well, that's teaching them that's the norm, right? That that's acceptable. Well, it must be acceptable. It's on the TV. I'm being allowed to watch it, so it must be okay. You can see the confusion that would set in the, in the minds you know, in the, mind, in, in the minds of the people. Well, you know, these sins, these sexual sins that, that come about, of course, you know, they lead to these, you know, these curses, and people try to resolve these curses with these drugs. Well, Pastor shows here, he says, and talking about the, 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 and talking about the, 
Uh, he, he says here, that, well, verse 18 here, he says, they're lying like dogs. They lie with their statistics, as one of them testified to us not too long ago. And when I was in school, and I actually, I actually took a, st a, a statistics course in school. And I kid you not, the name of this book that we were required to read was How to Lie with Statistics. I kid you not, that was the name of it. I think you can still get it, but it was called How to Lie with Statistics. And how you can twist things around to make them say, to make the numbers say anything that you want them to say. And this is what Pastor says here. He says they're lying like dogs. He says, he said they will operate on people and they will tell them you can expect to live so long you'll survive the cancer. And of course they'll list it as, well, they died of a heart attack. So when the doctors will convince you to go ahead and, well, you know, you can take this drug or you can do this or you can do that, you can have this surgery. And then when the person dies, you know, they can say, well, they didn't die because of the cancer. We were treating that. But they died because of the heart attack. See, I've got it listed right here on this death certificate, and that's what it says. That it was a heart attack, or it was a stroke, or it was pneumonia, it was complications, but it wasn't the cancer. But Pastor, one of the things, you know, one of the other things that he brings out in this sermon here, you know, he says, the fa he talks about the foundation of the apostles and the prophets is to educate and to build your mind. You know, the, the foundation of the world, the foundation of the, uh, the foundation of the beastly system is to sit there and destroy your mind, is to sit there and destroy, you know, it, it's, it's to convince you that you really don't need to pick up this book of Yisrael and read. What you really want to do is you want to sit here and, you know, watch this television show over here. Because that's what's really fun. That's what's really entertaining. That is more interesting. Surely that is more interesting than what can possibly be written in here. And they will and and that is the struggle of the carnal mind. That's part of the carnal mind that we have to overcome. You know, we wrestle with the carnal mind 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. We can't get away from it. We can't get away we can't get away from our, you know, we might be able to separate ourselves, you know, from somebody we might not get along with so well. Maybe we have a brother we don't quite get along with so well. You know, and we can, you know, we can separate ourselves from, you know, we can kind of say, okay, well, I'm, you know, things aren't going too well. I can go ahead and I can get away from over here. You know, I can go over here and get in my quiet spot and I can go ahead and, and, and cool down or get my mind on something else. You can't do that with the carnal mind. You can't do that with your own mind. I mean, it's with you constantly. So it's a battle. So we have to, we really have to strive and we have to have it set in our mind as to what is really important. You know, what benefit is it, you know, watching, you know, this foolishness that's on television? You know, what does it do? What does it benefit? What have we gained? If you sit there and watch a half hour sitcom, what have we, what have we benefited from that? What were they teaching during that sitcom? Were they destroying the head of the household? Were they destroying the the the, the man's role in the uh, 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 the man's role in the family as a father and a husband? Were they destroying that? Were they making fun of that? Were they ridiculing that? Yeah. And it's really prevalent. It's really prevalent on shows geared toward children. See, they're training the child in the way that they want them to go. See, and it's quite evident in it's quite evident in the things that are going on in the world now, in, in 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 the way that the children, you know, deal with authority. You know, you can see it when you, if you're in Walmart, just look and see. You know, you know, just watch the interaction between a, a child and their father, or a child and their mother. You know, you can see just the utter disrespect. You know, I saw it when I was with the school district and how. And how, as each year passed, that that disrespect grew and grew and grew, and the respect for themselves, the respect for any type of authority, the respect for their parents, got less and less and less. And this has been probably 15 years ago. 
50, at least 15 years ago, no, probably close, oh man, kind of scary thinking about that, probably closer to 20 years ago. And you see the results. We can see the results in the, in the world. But remember what Yahweh is doing. Yahweh is, in, in Genesis 1, Pastor shows here, he says, I am going to make mankind in my image and according to my likeness, and they are going to be given authority to rule. That's what this book right here, that's what that literature over there, that's what every class and that's what every sermon, that's what every radio broadcast teaches. How, that, how we can be a part of this ruling kingdom. And you know, Yahweh has made his choice extremely clear. You know, we're not here, man. Man, we're not here by mistake. There is not a single person that is in this house that is sitting here today that is listening to us, uh, you know, either by, either by radio, by, by internet, by whatever means, by recorded message. There's nobody here by mistake. Yahweh doesn't make a mistake. Yahweh brought us here because He wants each and every one of us here to be a part of His family. That's why we're here. We're not here on our own, remember? Remember the parable of the wedding feast? The king sent out the invitations to who he wanted invited to the wedding feast, remember? Yahweh has done that with each and every one of us. And he set before us, and he's showing us here, he says, you know, the, you know what is being taught here, he says, he, he says, and of course, they will not only have power to rule at that time, but you will be given, you'll have the foundation for sustaining peace and bringing about peace first. This whole world is seeking peace. They want it on their own terms. They want it as long as it fits what they want, as long as it fits in, you know, as long as it doesn't cramp their, you know, cramp their style too much. But that's what they want. You know, Yahweh's not a respecter of persons. You know, Yahweh's way is, you know, you know, Yahweh's way is sure. There is not a single word that comes forth from Yahweh's mouth that will not be accomplished. Yahweh says that. Yahweh says his word will not return to him void. Everything is going to be done. Every prophecy that Yahweh has spoken, everything that Yahweh has spoken about his house, about the work that this house will do, about the last day's witness, about the work that all of us are doing, there's not one bit of that that is going to fail. Not one bit. And we can bet our lives on it. Not one bit of that will fail. This foundation of the apostles and prophets is for that very thing, to educate you, to build your mind to the point where you won't make these mistakes, where you won't be bringing down your food supply that nourishes your brain and your body. See, that's the importance of food. The food is to, is to fuel the body. It's to fuel the mind. You know, if you put contaminated fuel in your gas tank in your car, it's not going to run worth a darn, is it? Well, this is what we're going to be guarding against. We're going to be guarding this priestly family. One of the things it's going to be guarding against the defiling of the food supply. So that our so that the brain so that the brain can function to its fullest potential, so it can run exactly like it needs to run, but you will have the brain power from an undefiled brain that they could have had, and that they had they retained Yahweh in their knowledge, but they didn't like that. They didn't want to retain Yahweh in their knowledge, and so since they didn't want to retain Yahweh in their knowledge, you know Yahweh said, "Okay, I'm going to allow them as part of my plan." to go their own way so that they can see and experience firsthand what sin brings. And we're seeing it in the world and we're seeing how it gets passed on down to the third and the fourth generation. In verse 32, pastor shows us here, he says, well, this is a mixed up world that we're living in right now. Okay, would anybody disagree with that statement? Would we say that the world is confused and they are messed up and they're mixed up? And pastor says, and of course we tell them how stupid their thinking is and they hate us for it. You know, remember their idea, the world's idea, the world's idea to solving the problem is drugs. 
continue doing what you're doing, we're going to find a cure for this pain and suffering that is being caused by your actions. So you don't have to feel the pain and suffering anymore so that you can go ahead and continue in your own way. This is their solution. They're reactive. They want to get rid of the symptom, but they don't address the cause. They don't address the problem. Well, pastor shows if they would repent, they could get this thing straightened out. They could straighten out the world if they would just repent. You know, the confusion. You know, the confusion that's in the world. There is so much confusion in the world. Did anybody see, did anybody see the news article it just came out this past week, and I didn't have I couldn't I didn't have time to find it, but it was talking about this. I think he was a kindergarten-aged boy. He was what five years old, okay? And of course, the the you know the people the the uh, the, the brightest minds in the world, you know, are saying, well, this young this young man is transgendered. In other words, he has all the parts of a boy, but he's more comfortable being a girl. At five years old. And this messed up thinking, remember where this thinking, remember, remember the, how these STDs, how these things get in and affect the brain, where rational decisions can't be made, you know, where the, where the, the, the brain just doesn't function properly. Well, this young, boy, this young boy was going to school. Well, the parents, of course, instead of correcting the problem, instead of correcting the issue, instead of, and instead of teaching them, no, you know, you're not a girl, you're a boy. And this is what boys do. You know, boys do this. No, you know what they did? Let his hair grow out. Dressed him up in little frilly dresses changed his name to a girl's name and started calling him a her. It didn't stop there. He was going to school. And he was using the girl's restroom. And the school took a stand. The school took a stand and says, no, this isn't acceptable. You can't do this. He is a boy. Well, the parents, in their infinite wisdom went to court. You know what the courts did? This little girl has every right to use that girl's restroom. That was the ruling of the court. You see the confusion that's in the minds, the parents, the confusion, I mean, the confusion in the parents, the confusion that's in the judges. The confusion, I mean, I, I saw a reaction of the parents and both of them were just jumping up and down for joy and say, oh, this is so great. I'm so glad that this is going to be such a benefit for her. What is wrong? I mean, you can see, I mean, you can see that, you know, you, know, you can see the utter confusion there. There was another article I read just talking about this confusion. And it was talking about, and, and I, I saw this today, and this was uh, from CTV News. Uh, it looks like it was from uh, CT, ctvnews.ca. I'm assuming that's Canada. It says, UK could allow a technique to create babies with DNA from three people. It says, the British government is moving ahead with plans to allow doctors to create babies through vitro fertilization using genetic material from three people. England's chief medical officer announced the decision in London Friday, saying the advantage of the technique is that it would help prevent mothers from passing on major congenital diseases to their babies. Okay, well, why not stop doing the things that are bringing about these things in the first place? Wouldn't that be an easier solution? It sure would be a more reliable solution. It says scientists have developed groundbreaking new procedures which could stop these diseases being passed on, she said in a statement. It's only right that we look 
to introduce this life-saving treatment as soon as we can. Well, why not the life-saving education that comes from character education to put a stop to creating these things in the first place? Since it says here, this is great news for UK science and gives hope to women who just want a healthy baby. The UK government has made a moral decision, she says in this statement. They made a moral decision. You see the confusion? How about the, uh, anybody read about the, uh, see about the, uh, the sent, uh, was, what was her, um, this was from what, a couple of days ago about the, they were said about this chaos that erupted in the Texas State Senate here a couple of nights ago. Said about uh, the abortion right backers thundered their opposition to tough new restrictions in the midst of, uh, in, 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 in the midst of the den, majority, uh, it says majority Republicans insisted the bill, which would have banned abortions after 20 weeks of pregnancy, had passed, but the records show that it didn't happen until after a midnight deadline. So one of the things that they were wanting to pass in this bill was abortions after 20 weeks. Okay? Translate that out five months. Well, this individual, you know, of course, she got in here and she blocked this legislation from passing. It said, the bill would have required clinics to upgrade to surgical level, level centers, an expense that would have caused most existing facilities to close. So what was actually behind this is that they, in, in what they were wanting to do, the, 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 the idea of the bill, at least is what it sounds like to me, is that they wanted to upgrade the, um, upgrade the facilities to better support the procedures that were being done. Well, she jumped up and down and didn't like that because as a result, it would have closed 37. There are 37 facilities that would have closed as if that would have passed. But I mean, uh, and, and I mean the, the the confuse. I mean, just the confusion, and, and everybody was jumping up and down, hooting and hollering, and boy, they just couldn't praise. They can't praise this woman enough for what she did. Confusion, utter utter confusion. But the world is mixed up, and any time that anything is said. Anything that any type of correction that is brought, of course, the prophecies show that those who would depart from iniquity and those who would teach anyone to depart from iniquity would be esteemed as mad. They're going to be looked at as crazy. And of course, this is the hatred. This is the hatred that is brought. This is the hatred that comes forth when the people when the people are corrected. Well. This is the job, this is the job of the seventh Moloch. This is the job that this house is doing, and this is the job that our pastor and overseer, the seventh Moloch, this is what he is doing at this time. And the scriptures show, you know, the, you know and, and, and this was actually brought, it says here, keep in mind that, the, the, that each one of these things is a pattern, a, a pattern to the kingdom of Yahweh, that shows Moshe that he would follow in order to make mankind in his image and in his likeness. You know, they, you know, they're, he says, in his image and after his likeness. Well, he had these trumpet blowers and we find out that there were seven trumpeters, seven trumpets or seven trumpeters. And of course, this is the final, this is the final work. This is the trumpet. This is the last trumpet that is going to usher in the kingdom of Yahweh. And this was actually in the seventh moon. On the seventh moon, of the first of the moon, you shall have a Sabbath, a memorial blowing of trumpets, the feast of trumpets, a holy convocation. And pastor says, remember the seventh moon, the seventh, remember the seven pictures completeness. You know, it, it pictures completeness. And 70 times seven, or 77, you know, pictures complete, complete perfection. And he says the seventh moon, um, the seventh moon on the first moon you shall have a Sabbath, a memorial blowing of trumpets, the feast of trumpets, a holy convocation. Well, of course, this is in celebration of the plan, this planned work, the planned work that would bring about not only a priesthood, a righteous priesthood, but it's actually going to convert the 12 tribes. You know, it's going to convert, you know, this, what is going to come out of this work 
you know, as, as, you know, as pastor has shown, is a group of priests, a family of priests that will not turn to the right or to the left. It is going to usher in a perfect priesthood, a perfect priesthood, you know, that will not compromise, that won't turn, you know, that won't say, okay, well, you can go ahead and do this, that's all right. No, they're going to stand, and we have to show that we're going to stand no matter what. And this is why the tests come upon us, so that we can, so that we can be proven, so that we can go through and prove that we are ready, so that we can prove that we will be worthy to take part in this, to be a part of this great kingdom. And he shows here, it's, you know, pastor shows here, he says, it says, speak to the children of Israel on the seventh moon of the first moon, you shall have a Sabbath memorial. Remember, a memorial, the, the, a, a, to bring four things, to reminder, a reminder of, uh, of what this does, of what it means, you know, of, of what this priesthood is and of what these laws do. It's a shadow, it's a pattern of the kingdom of Yahweh. It's a shadow of protection upon Yahweh's people. You know, that's what the laws are. The laws are a shadow of protection. They protect us from the disease epidemics. They protect us from the curses that come from the breaking of the law of Yahweh. Now, pastor also shows here, you know, and, and he goes through uh, this word Malak, and he shows that this word Malak is a messenger. He shows it's a messenger. In uh, verse 2, uh, Revelation 8, verse 2, it says, And I saw the seven Malakim, the seventh Malak who stood before Yahweh. Now, if you've got this, if you still remember the work that we did about standing before Yahweh or bringing the people before the throne of Yahweh, like the elders stood before Yahweh with their talits and their kippahs on, or, uh, or you or Yahweh judges the nations. You are bringing those nations before Yahweh's throne. They are cut off from Yahweh's throne as, as Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 shows. You know, we're allowing the people, the people that are taking this message to heart and that are repenting of sin and, and following these laws who are, who are uh, you know, putting these things aside and striving to follow the laws of Yahweh, they are being brought back into contact with Yahweh. Because remember, sin cuts us off from Yahweh. Sin cuts us off from Yahweh. And the house of Yahweh, uh, see, sin cuts you off from Yahweh, like all of Abilene is cut off from Yahweh at this time. And they will, and they will be cut off until they repent of sin. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. I would, I would that all of the people of Abilene would read and then start contacting the house of Yahweh and start repenting and telling the universities we want nothing more to do with sin and all of these curses that you're bringing on us at this time. And this is what we are standing for in this house today. We want nothing to do with the world. We have nothing in common with the world. You know, we are striving to get all of this worldliness out of us so that we can be made in the image and likeness of Yahweh. And you know, there's a lot of finger pointing and things that go on, and you see it a lot in politics, where people will point and they say, well, this president did this, he's responsible for this, or he's responsible for that. Well, it's not the president, Pastor shows, that's bringing, on the curses, that's bringing curses on the world. He alone can't do this, but the curses are brought about from an institution established thousands of years. Remember the institution that was established by Cush? It was called He Rebelled. He says the word they put there was Nimrod, and it means he rebelled. Remember, Cush rebelled against the laws of Yahweh. And he brought about this Nimrod, and he brought about this Nimrod system. And remember, this Nimrod system, what came out, uh, what came out of that, uh, uh, as the scripture shows, is Babel, or Babylon, which means, remember, it means confusion. And we've already seen, you know, we've seen through a couple of the articles and some of the other things uh, that we've talked about this evening about the confusion that is, in, that is in the world. And, you know, part of this confusion is that the people are not able to understand, you know, they're not un able to understand what's written in the scriptures. Well, you look at the time Pastor takes when he's going through and he shows us and he, you know, and he will take as much time as is necessary for us to understand the things that are written in any book of the scriptures. This one individual that pastor was talking about, this guy, this individual kind of threw his arms up and said, well, I just can't understand the book of Revelation. You know, but pastor, you know, he shows by, by taking line upon line, you know, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little, 
you know, he shows us how these scriptures fit together. Because not everything about a, about a particular subject was written in one particular area. It was kind of, it was written by different prophets, by different apostles. It was written by different individuals. And Yahweh has inspired, you know, he is inspired and, and, and is leading our pastor and, and showing us how these things all fit together. And how this perfect plan of Yahweh, you know, how it all perfectly fits together. And Pastor shows here, he says, now remember what we were reading. You know, he was, he was bringing out some things in Revelation. He was showing how they tie in with, how, how they tie in with Matithia. Uh, you know, Revelation, how it ties in with Matithia, how it ties in with Genesis. You know, on how, and, and, and with Daniel, how all of these things tie together. But he says, if you remember what we're reading, I will, I will, I will uh, I'll read it to you again in Revelation 10.5. And the Moloch, which Yachanan saw, the Moloch, he said, which Yachanan saw, he saw a certain Moloch, or messenger of Yahweh here, and that Moloch, which I saw standing upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hands. And pastor, he shows here, he says, now you picture, now you picture, you get this picture in your mind. He means he's not talking about the people of Yahweh. Listen to what he says here, he says, but you picture, you get this pictured in your mind because you interpret the scriptures. You interpret the scriptures. Instead of letting scripture interpret the scripture, we conjure up in our minds this mighty being that stands higher than an obelisk in Washington. You know, the imagination runs wild. You know, think about the, about the beast in Revelation. You know, this woman having seven heads and ten horns. You know, that rises up out of the sea. You know, I mean, you can you can visually see, you know, a you know a worldly person will visually see this beast, and the, and the I mean this this literal beast rising up out of the sea. Well, but when you allow the scriptures to interpret the scripture, it shows and identifies that the woman is this great whore who sits on seven whose city sits on seven hills. So it identifies a particular religion. It identifies a particular organization. Okay, simply by allowing the scriptures to interpret the scriptures. And this is where this is where the people this is where the people fail. This is part of the confusion that this is part of the confusion that they that, that you know that they that they experience. And part of that confusion comes about simply because they reject the one who has been sent. Those who reject the one sent will not find themselves in the kingdom of Yahweh. Let me see where else we want to go here. We're on, you can see page 105. Okay. On page 106 over here in verse 80, you know, Pastor, he, you know, you know, Pastor shows us here, he says, you see iniquity increasing. And we kind of covered this a little bit earlier. You know, it says, but you see iniquity increasing. I saw iniquity in increasing in my lifetime. The two girls that I just read to you about Mondale's daughter and Kennedy's daughter, both 50 years old. One of them died on the 16th of that month and one died on the 17th. Now, what are the odds of that? They were both born in the same year and they were both daughters of political leaders uh, and they had lots and lots and lots of money. He says they could buy any of the drugs they wanted, all the doctor's treatments. In fact, the doctor said to one, no, this is inoperable, but we can't do anything about it. But Kennedy wouldn't accept that and he found others who would operate. They said, well, your cancer is in remission now. You can expect a life of 100 years, life expectancy. Okay, again, there we go. You know, you see the, the, um, the deception that comes in, you know, again, you know, again through, the, through, st through statistics. Um, and this iniquity. Remember, the iniquity in the last days, you know, in the last days, these perilous times. And we truly are living in perilous times. You know, when you look up the word perilous, take a look, I and mean, if you get time, look up the word perilous and see what all it entails and see how severe of a time period it's, it's describing. It's describing a very, very severe time period. Well, iniquities would increase, Pastor shows, and I saw it increase in my lifetime. The swinging 60s, the swinging 60s, you know, the, you know, the, 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 you know the, that time period. Um, the druggists are getting rich. They can't build hospitals and pharmacies fast enough. 
you know, the hospitals are full. You know, the drugs can't be furnished fast enough. He said they're disappearing from the shelves. We can't keep them on the shelves. And they're bragging about their sales. You know, and that's what it's about. It's about the almighty dollar. Well, Revelation shows that they brag about it right up to the very end. And the merchants are saying, well, who will buy this junk anymore? Well, they didn't say that. I said it. But that's what it is. Who will buy their junk anymore? Eventually, you know, it's going to come to the point, you know, when the, when the one-third of man is killed over the one-fourth part of the earth in and around the great river Euphrates, you know, I remember the great Kahanya Didia, he, he, he opened up a sermon. He opened up one of his sermons one day, and he said, you know, I'm going to show you, at the, end of, at the end of this sermon here, I'm going to show you what the world is going to do you know, what's going to take place. I can show you exactly what's going to take place when this one-third of man is killed over this one-fourth part of the earth. And boy, you could hear a pin drop. I mean, everybody was so riveted to every word that that priest said. And then he ended. You know what they're going to do? He said they're still not going to repent of their fornications, of their thefts, of their sorceries. They're still not going to repent of these things. And it was like, yeah, I knew that. But the point is, you know, we have, you know, these things, we have to bring these things to remembrance. We have to bring these things. We have to rehearse these things from time to time. You know, men, we don't realize it. And even, I know I see some young men out here, uh, some very young men out here. You know, I, I would venture that the knowledge that these young men, the, 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 young, the young young men have out here, you know, would put to shame the majority of adults out here in the world. And the thing, men, we have to remember is remember, part of the feast, you know, part of the reason that we come to the Sabbath, part of the reason that we have the feast days, you know, is to bring these things to remembrance, to bring these things to the forefront of our minds. Because we've got to remember the things that we're learning here, we're not learning just for our own knowledge. Yes, we're going to benefit from these things. Oh, yeah, I mean, we benefit from the every word that comes forth out of this book right here, out of the scriptures. If we take it to heart, if we apply it and we use it, we will benefit from every single word that comes out of here. But you know, it's not just for our benefit. It's so that we can take this information, we can take this knowledge that we're gaining, that is being passed on to us, so that we can pass it on to others. So, that, so nobody else has to go through and to suffer you know, these, you know, these excruciating diseases that are out there. So that nobody ever has to go out there and, and you know, and, and, uh, you know, be told that their, that their, that their, that their newborn baby has a, has a birth defect. It doesn't have to be that way. Those things don't have to be. And they won't be. Those things... These sicknesses, these diseases, these wars, you know, we, the crimes, the murders, the rapes, the robberies, all of these things are going to come to an end. Yahweh shows that they are going to come to an end. And it's not going to come to an end through the teachings that come forth from somebody who considers, considers himself the, the smartest person in the world. It's not going to come from any major universities. It's going to come from the one who Yahweh has chosen to lead his house in these last days. It is going to come from the one sent. That is where it is going to come from. This is where the knowledge is going to come from. And part of this, and part of these things that we're going to be teaching... And I, you know, and, and part of it was shown out here in the in the technology and with with the with the technology, uh, you know, the history of the technology out here. Part of that is going to be going back to basics. You know, whether or not we want to think about it, we're spoiled. We are spoiled. If we want a light, what do we do? Well, go flip the switch. We want a drink? Okay, I'm going to go over here. Ah, I'm going to turn on this. I'm going to pop the tap on this water here and, yep, let it go ahead and come on through. 
something is using the restroom. We don't even have to go outside, but we can. Um, we, we, we've got that. We don't have to go out and dig a hole, unless we're outside and camping and and and, and away from the, our facilities. We're spoiled. And pastor has, you know, pastor has made mention of this. You know, he said, you know, you know, we, you know, we have the air conditioning. We have all of these things. What are we going to do when the electricity stops flowing? How bad is that going to impact us? Well, for one thing, we're going to have a really, really hard time charging these silly cell phones. We're going to have a tough time with the computers. We might even have a tough time getting a drink of water because the tap isn't going to work anymore. Unless, like Pastor instructed us in the beginning, remember he said to work on your immune system? What kind of preparations are we making? Because we know the time is coming, right? We know it's coming. We know, I mean, we know it's coming. Are we being prepared? Are we preparing ourselves? Do we truly believe what the seventh Moloch is telling us? You know, he's telling us we need to go back to basics. He mentions one thing here, uh, you know, he mentions one thing he mentions in here about, about he said, uh, when we got ready for to, to have chicken for supper, we didn't go to the refrigerator or freezer and pull one out. We went out to the chicken coop. I mean, think about the wisdom. Think about the wisdom there. You don't need refrigeration for that, right? Doesn't matter. You don't have to have electricity to keep that chicken fresh. You just go out and get him and take care of him. Put him on the pot and however long it takes to make oaky chicken. I don't know how long it takes. But you have fresh oaky chicken. You know, Pastor, again, you know, he, he really emphasizes about how things have gone in, these, in the last days. You know, he really emphasizes that, you know, he shows in the world, in the future, the world is going to go back to basics. We're going to, be, we're going to be going back to these things. We're going to be going back to, you know, you know like, like we're showing out here, you know, milking the goats by hand. You know, to going out and, and uh, you know, doing a lot of things manually that we kind of take for granted right now. And he also talks about the way that the children are raised. You know, he talks about right now, you know, now in, 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 the, uh, in, in the majority of households, you've got several televisions. A television in every room. And what's being broadcast? Certainly nothing righteous. Not by the world anyway. But Pastor shows, he says, the children at that time, he says, I can remember uh, when we would be in the fields and you know and working in the field and he says you know that uh, after the after, after working in the field they would sit around with a group of men and you know a shade tree and they were walk you know just talking and relaxing after you know after a, after a meal and before they went back to work he says you could hear the scriptures being discussed you know and it goes back to to training up the child and the way they should go and he says and the children at that time they were all taught the holy scriptures you know, and this is, you know, and, and this is vital. It has to be done. You know, we have to take a look. Remember, man, we have to take a look. You know, the laws, you know, the, the instruction that we're given in the Holy Scriptures, it's not, they're not idle words. You know, and I'm going to use the words of Moshe. You know, these aren't just idle words. That these words that are in the Scriptures, they mean life. They are life. They are life everlasting. You know, and these words are being taught, they're being taught by the trumpeter, by the seventh Moloch. And I'd like to read how, I mean, just how he, how Pastor, you know, he, he, he really con sums everything up here. He says, he says, now he's saying in his kingdom, there's a place for you and the Savior. Uh, and the Savior said at that time, I'm going to send a Moloch to bring this message to you. Well, we have that Moloch that is set before us every Sabbath. And then in Revelation, in the last chapter, Yahshua is speaking and he says, and, and, and the Spirit and the Bride say, come. Well, you know what the Spirit and the Brides are. It's the Spirit of the laws. It's the laws of Yahweh, which is love. 
You know, the Spirit is not this gassy God floating around, but it is the, it is the laws of Yahweh, which is love, joy, peace, and peace, the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. Well, and he says America is going to remain rich until the nuclear bombs hit it, and it's going to go down suddenly. In one hour, it's going to go down. In one hour. That time is very close at hand, and you have but a very short time before this takes place. And all of the politicians know this now. They know that we're going into war, serious war, nuclear war, and they know it. Well, I think, personally, I think any war is serious. Okay? But nuclear war, the most devastating, and they know it. They know that there is no way of stopping it. It's, only, it's the only way they have of, loose, of, quote, solving the problem. But this will be the band-aid that they want to put on it. But the, from this line of thinking, this brain set that they have, of course, is being made with confused men who have also lived in the swinging 60s and come to us today with all these diseases. There's no telling how many of these, how many of these that we're seeing and dealing with today in the world uh, were started, you know, who were started on these drugs and then increased to other drugs besides that and including, you know, marijuana or any, any, any type of drug. It absolutely butchers the brain. It kills it. These things have been proven. They kill the brain. But these are the things they want you to go to. These are the things that you're being coaxed to by Satan's preacher. Be in conformity with the world. Let us conform with the world. Well, this is what they want you to do. Well, can two walk together unless they have agreed? Well, of course, they can't walk with Yahweh because they don't agree with peace and with joy and with love. And this is what we are striving for. This is what we practice here. This is what we stand for. And this is what we are going to continue to teach. So, and may Yahweh bless you. And I will turn the services back to the next speaker. So, with that, men... May Yahweh be with you and bless you. May Yahweh bless your efforts on this great Sabbath day. May you have a, 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 a joyful Sabbath. And with that, if everybody will stand, we will go ahead and we'll close. Great and merciful loving Father, whose holy and righteous name is Yahweh. Once again, Father, this is your servant, Kohan Priya Hawkins, Father, along with the men of your house, asking permission to come before you under the headship of our pastor and overseer, the great Kohan Yisrael Abel Hawkins, and through the authority of your son, Yahshua Messiah. And Father Yahweh, we do thank you for the great blessing and the teachings that you've given to us, Father Yahweh. And we thank you for the great teacher that you've given to us, Father Yahweh, the, the one sent in these last days, to explain, Father Yahweh, your great plan to us. And we do pray that you continue to bless the efforts of your house, Father Yahweh, that you continue to watch over and bless our pastor and overseer, the great Kahan Yisrael Abel Hawkins, that you will bless him, Father Yahweh, and continue to protect him from all of the enemies, Father Yahweh, that do, do seek to destroy him at this time. We also pray, Father Yahweh, for all those who are striving to, to come to perfection, Father Yahweh, that you would bless us all in our efforts in overcoming these things, Father Yahweh, so that we can take on your perfect righteous character and be counted worthy to serve you and your people forever. We pray for all those, Father Yahweh, who are sick and afflicted, Father Yahweh, from the oldest to the youngest. May you have mercy upon them, Father. May you strengthen them and heal them, Father Yahweh, from the afflictions and curses that, that they do have at this time, Father, and just pray that you would heal them completely, Father Yahweh, heal their minds. Heal their bodies, Father Yahweh. Heal them completely so that they can all, so we can all, Father Yahweh, stand and rejoice before you as a single body, rejoicing, Father Yahweh, and standing in our place, Father Yahweh, and, and, and doing the work that you would have us do in these last days. And Father, we do love you. We do praise you. And we thank you for all these great things you've given to us. And we ask these blessings in the name of your Son, Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah.